Uh, I'm from McAfee. Uh, this is my first time at ShockCon, and uh, we're going to be talking more about real-time incident response and how we fit into that type of discussion. So uh, I'm a sales engineer from the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I am the young kid. Almost every talk I give, I talk to everyone and I say, uh, I'm new to this. I've only been doing IT for 15 years, not the 25 or 30 plus of some of the others are out here. So uh, I want to kind of give an idea of where I'm coming from, why incident response is important to me. Uh, I started off in the Navy doing IT admin, network security vulnerability. Uh, I left the military after the nine and went to Microsoft as a security analyst. So I, I was the guy sitting in the chair, just like everybody out in the audience, uh, looking at what was going on, watching the sim, watching IDS, trying to find the events, and then what to do with them once I got there. Uh, after I left Microsoft, I moved over to uh, sales at McAfee. I really like sim, I like incident response, and I wanted to be able to give back to the, the ecosystem and the industry and, and move forward with it. Uh, but it, it's definitely focusing on incident response. And so that's, that's why I wanted to come in and, and give a talk about incident response and, and kind of get a feel for where everybody is and, and how we do things. Uh, you know, I, I think through SIM, especially because that's my specialty, of, you know, it's a progression. You know, everybody's looking at it from a, a technology standpoint. You know, oh, I need the new tool. I need the new database. I, I need to be able to get to that data faster. Uh, but that's not just the only vector. I mean, we have skills and, and techniques of what we need to do. You know, I, I kind of grabbed a snapshot. You know, back, back in the early days, we were all looking at raw logs, right, line by line by line. And that's not necessarily the best and fastest way to get back to getting to the incident that we want to solve, right? And I, I think through incident response is not just one thing, but it's an event. You know, we want to see what happened from everywhere and be able to build a picture, and that way we can get to the answer much, much faster. Uh, with that in mind, there's definitely a, a piece that I've been discussing with customers. Uh, it, it's a, a problem that I see going forward, and the, uh, the decisions of what's happening, you know, in the early days, you know, that evolution, right? The early days, it was the CEO who ran the company. They made the decisions on what was going to happen and, and what the direction was. And then they started hiring guys to help them, the CIOs, right? And they're going to manage all the information, and that guy's going to make the decision. And then he needed help, so he hired a CISO. And so the security information, he's going to manage that. And it, it keeps rolling down further and further and further. And so we want to provide incident responders because these are the people actually making the decisions nowadays. They're the ones, I mean, not they, you guys are the ones making the decisions. When you see those events in, in your security tools, when you're looking at the SIM, when you're looking at your IDS, you're responsible for making that decision now. And so we want to help everybody get to a point where that decision becomes, again, faster, easier, more intelligent, better design. And then, of course, I have the, the great picture. I remember sitting at my desk at Microsoft, and I've got these monitors in front of me, and it felt like NASA. And then I stopped and realized, I, said, I only have two eyes, right? I, I don't need you know, 16, 20 monitors sitting in front of me showing me graphs and charts and everything else. I need the information that's important. And that's what I really like to try and put, put across is, is it's not about how much information you have. It's about the, the veracity and the validity of the information you're getting. Right, so you need tools and technologies that help you get there. We want to be able to show you what's important, when it's important, and why it's important. And so I, I thought through the incident response process, you know, what is it that we need? And I'm sure everybody here knows the, the standard, right? It's the, the protect, the detect, the, you know, the respond, and the remediate, right? That's the life cycle of an incident. How do we, where does all of this fit in? And so when, we, when I think through the technology, I, I, of course, SIM, that's what I do. So I think log collection and alerting. Uh, an important component in your logs, right? It, it used to be the person was looking at the log in, in the file, and they knew that it was from this device or that device, and they could figure out that this, meant the, you know, this was the source IP address, and then came destination and that sort of thing. But as we get more logs and more data coming out at us, we need the ability to have the technology work for us, and normalization is definitely a key component there. We want to be able to, to have that data show us what the source IP address is and actually label it source IP address. We, we don't need it to be cryptic or archaic. And so 
these are the types of things I think when I think, in, think of incident response, these are the ones that really resonate for me. Moving down the stack, of course, after we've got our data, it's been normalized, it looks good, what do you do with it, right? You wanna be able to have it make sense. And so correlation, creating alarms, these are the types of things that you need in your systems to, to get, help you get out there, get, get rid of all of the junk, be able to show you what's really, really important. So as we progress, again, I'm thinking through the evolution, the, the discussion of technology, I, I like to ask the question, right? If you had an alarm inside of your systems, how many people would let the system decide to firewall or block it, right? It's, it's a, it's, we'll let the sim do that, right? And that's the progression we're looking at, right? Because I don't see any hands going up. <laughs> Right? It's about that validity of the data. We want to be able to get it to that point where as we have these things happen, yes, I trust the system enough. I'm going to let it do that firewall block for me when this alarm fires because it's, the fidelity is there. Data in three directions. So this is a, uh, something that I, I came up with when I was thinking through the instant response for this topic. And it, it's a direction that I see that we're going in is I say three directions because there's, there's what happened already and that our sim helps us with that. It pulls in our logs and it creates our alarms and it tells us that something happened. And so I have that, that's one. The next one is to then take that logic of what I've, what I've seen and put that in so that it'll find it again if it should happen. So that's the future. And the sim technologies today, they really do help with that, the past and the future. We've got rules, we have alerts and we have alarms. There's one piece that's still kind of missing, and that's that middle piece. What's happening right now? Because a sim is gonna have to wait for the logs to come in, we're gonna have to have the rules in place, and we're gonna have to wait for the log to get correlated. But that's not, that's not gonna tell me what's happening right now. And that's really where that real-time network and real-time endpoint comes in. And it, it really is a technology change. Because what we're looking at today, or you know, I should say, what we're looking at for yesterday is an architecture with a central piece and all of my endpoints. And when we think through the data and how it gets there, it's about the endpoints talking to the middle and the endpoints talking to the middle. And then I go to the middle server, the database server, or my console, and I look at that piece of information that's there. But again, it's that lag. We have to wait for every single one to come in. And when we look at that, it's a, it's a topic around how do we change it? How do we, how do we modify the technology so that it works for us and not against us? And that's really that real-time piece. I now want to go out, not to every endpoint, but just the first ones in the chain. And I want to ask them the question, who has this process running, you know, bad.exe, and who has it connecting to the internet right now? And so I'm gonna have that first host in each chain. It's gonna go out to all of its friends and it's gonna ask that question. And then in the end, I'll get an answer. And that's the shift that I see us making. That's where we're going to be able to, instead of asking a question of a database and waiting for the database to give us the answer, I'm gonna ask a question of the host in real time. Who has this process running? Show me. And we're seeing responses back 15 seconds. I mean, it, it is unbelievable the, the abilities we're seeing moving forward in technology today. And then that opens up more, right? So if we think about what's happening before and what, what might happen in the future with my rules, that's our, the beginning of our incident response. But anyone knows who's been in, you know, I remember when Configur hit and it was all of a sudden thousands of machines were, were infected and how did we know and how are we gonna find what else? And well, if I have the ability to go out to my host and say, who has this process running right now? Just bring back that list. And as soon as I have that list, now that I know, go, go tell that process to stop. I need an action. Take this action and go do it. And so again, it's the evolution. We had the raw logs we looked at, we have the sim looking at logs for us and normalizing and parsing and creating things. And now I have a razor that I can use to go carve out my information right now when I need it. So that's the, the real time direction that I see us moving towards. 
And of course, when you think about it, we can't do it alone. Uh, should be a very similar slide to the last presentation. Uh, we need to be able to communicate with everybody else in the industry, right? No, no one thing is going to be able to, to solve it all. Because if it, if it did, well, we'd all have it and none of us would be here and we'd all be on the beach having a vacation because it was all solved. And so we look at it from a perspective and, and everybody should look at it from a perspective of, of depth and being able to integrate all of our components together so that it's a seamless platform for security. Um, looking at that platform, of course, uh, we want to be able to get the data from each of the places that it matters, right? And it, it's no longer just about the, the endpoint and the firewall. Right? And we can't, we can't live in a world that way anymore. You know, we have to think about our data centers, you know, what, what technology do I have to have there as opposed to the technology I have on the network or on my endpoint, right? And again, you'll notice it's all the way, getting all the way back down to that most important piece the real-time awareness. I need to have the information that's important to me and get it back out. And so that's, that's a way that we're looking at moving forward. And natural progression, of course, when we look at it, it's not always about one vendor. We have partners. It's not always about one technology. Sometimes we don't have what it takes and we need more help. And so we look at it as a security connected process. We have people, process, and technology where we want to all work together and build a more cohesive story for our problems. And we talked before, there was a talk earlier about sharing information and being able to get that information back and forth. This is, again, ways that we're going to be able to help everyone be able to communicate better. And I, I see that for myself in the technologies I work with, but being able to share details, local threat intelligence, global threat intelligence, getting that information back and forth to everybody. Uh, that's, that's really what I see for incident response and where we're going today. Thank you, everybody.